Hey guys, Nick Arnold here. We're gonna go over the SIG Cross Rifle. We're selling a ton of these barrels and we just need to get some information out to you guys on how to install them. Before I get going, if you are not 100% confident in what you're doing by the end of this video, don't attempt it. Uh, if you need to, you can send your rifle over here. We will install it for you or you can take it to somebody in your area, uh, a competent gunsmith that will do this. At least pay somebody once to have them show you how to do it. That's my best, uh, best advice for the time being. But most of you should be able to do this install by the end of this video. Now I have already started with some of the tools that you're gonna need. Uh, Torx 15, Torx 25, okay? We're using those to take off our rail and the six screws that hold our handguard on. You will also need an AR-15 barrel nut wrench. This one is uh, actually an RPR wrench from Long Range Rifles Inc. Uh, to remove the barrel nut. And then there's a second nut here that holds your barrel extension in uh, or on, locked in the right position. And for that, I am using an older Midwest Industries handguard wrench. Uh, there are some better tools that are becoming available. I'm sure you guys have been searching that. And as they do, of course, we'll be buying them. But here at the shop, we've done numerous barrel changes. These tools here have got us by just fine, okay? So first thing we're going to do is uh, use the AR-15 wrench. Most of these um, SIG rifles that we've had come into the shop, these things uh, are barely hand tight. And of course, this one is only hand tight for demonstration purposes only. I would always torque these to 45 foot pounds on this nut here, okay? And that is the barrel nut that holds your barrel and extension into the receiver. We're gonna remove that, okay? And then the barrel slides right out the front. We've used a three by five index card, which is also something you guys should have at home with some blue painter's tape to make a nice little guard to protect the surface of our barrel while we're putting it into the vise. You guys are not gonna need a barrel vise quite like this. Uh, a Viper barrel vise that can be found at uh, brownells.com. The Viper barrel vise, I think they're about 65, 70 bucks. Will work just fine. Okay, so we're gonna tighten that down, and then we are going to use our uh, we are going to use our Midwest Industries handguard wrench to break the lock ring that sits right in front of your barrel extension. Okay, put that on there real good. You want to make sure that's on there pretty good because these were let's face it, these were not made. They were made to put a handguard on one time. Uh, they were not made to be used over and over and over again. We have actually had to re, you know, bend this thing a few times to get it to hold its shape. And like I said, there are better tools coming out. We'll loosen that up. And once you've loosened that ring, you should be able to unscrew the barrel extension by hand. Now I had somebody call me and tell me that they actually damaged their receiver trying to get this off, but I'm thinking Something else must have been happening there for that to happen. I have never seen one be on that tight. In fact, quite the opposite. Normally, they're a little bit too loose. I've never seen any type of thread locker on these either, and I don't recommend you use it because if you do, the next time you change your barrel, you will be disappointed, I promise. Take our factory barrel, set it down. This is one of our demo test barrels. You can tell it's uh, getting kind of ugly. It's been put on and taken off a million times. We will put this on here to protect the finish again. Get it back into our vise. And then we're going to set our head space in the next few minutes, few seconds. Now, lock ring goes on first. If you want to use some type of a thread lubricant like um, a very small amount of never sees. Not a lot, because you'll get it all over the place and you'll look like the fucking Tin Man when it's all over. Then screw on your barrel extension. I don't screw this on all the way. Now, gauges, a go and a no. If you do not have gauges, do not attempt this. You can use a go and a no or a go and a field gauge, but you have to at least have that. If you do not have that, don't do it. I don't care what you're reading on the forums. 
We'll insert our go gauge into the chamber and then we will insert our bolt into the barrel extension and rotate it into the closed position. Now we're going to use our bolt, not as a wrench, but we're going to go ahead and screw the extension on with the bolt in the closed position until it's tight. What we've done there is we're making sure that the go gauge is on the bolt face and being moved all the way to the back of the chamber, counterclockwise for our lock ring here. And then we will use our handy dandy Midwest Industries wrench again. And we are gonna to torque these to 55 foot pounds. Okay. Now to double check our work, we will unlock the bolt and extract our go gauge. And we will put our no gauge in. Now, when we put our no gauge in, we should not be able to close the bolt. We should be able to get it in, but we should not be able to rotate it closed. And I cannot. It will not give me any rotation at all. And what that's telling me, since I can't close the bolt, is that we have properly had space the rifle or the barrel. Now, if you can close the bolt on your no gauge, repeat this process and adjust this here until you can no longer close on the no and you still get a bolt close on they go okay hopefully everybody's following that hopefully everybody's smelling what i'm stepping in and from this point here we will pull the barrel out of the vise and get this bad boy put back together now i recommend when you lock put the barrel nut back on that locks your barrel into the receiver that you do not put the barrel back in the vise holding it this way to tighten this. Because when you do that, chances are you will loosen the extension. Uh, I like to use a 308 armor's block and a, I just use a guitar vise. Uh, I put that in there and then torque this one here to uh, 45 foot pounds using the, a standard AR-15. You guys remember the old glacier guards, that's what this one's meant for. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a light twist. I'm not gonna actually torque it. You have to torque it on your end. This is only being done for demonstration purposes. And then of course we will put this thing back together. Um, I'm actually just gonna throw a couple, um, couple of screws in here real quick just to hold it down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna put the bolt in it while this thing's locked into the gun. We're gonna check the headspace one more time out of the vise just to be extra certain that we have done things right. So it's kind of hard to see the bolt rotating in the video, so we decided we'd do it outside of the gun. So bolts back in. My go gauge here, I should be able to insert into the chamber and I should be able to close the bolt and I can. So that's good. We're halfway there. The no gauge I should be able to put in there and I should not be able to close the bolt. If I can close the bolt here, I need to go through all the steps again. And that is as far as I can drop that bolt, it will not close. So, and don't drop your gauge on the ground like I just did. Now I gotta throw that gauge in the garbage. <laughs> anyway, to heck with it. It's a good thing we buy these things quite a few at a time. If you guys have any questions about this, except for the dropping of the gauge. Don't ask me any questions about that. Anyway, if you have any questions, just give the shop a call. I might not be able to spend an hour talking to you on the phone, but I can at least make sure that you're being safe installing your new barrel. If you have questions about any of the products that you've seen on the website, give the shop a call, send us an email, straightjacketarmory at gmail.com, or give us a call at 307-707-3181. Myself or Marsha, we're happy to go through this, these products with you and make sure that you're gonna have fun using them. Thanks guys.